We're going to start this tutorial looking at simplifying algebraic expressions as part of section 6.1 where we looked at properties of exponents. We're going to take a look at three problems that go in increasing difficulty. So let's take a look at um, the first one. Uh, here we see a product of two numbers, x and y, that are both each raised to different powers and their product is raised to another power of negative 3. So we're going to take a look at this um, and solve it a couple of different ways. Remember that as long as we apply the properties of exponents, it doesn't matter um, necessarily that we follow a strict protocol. So the first thing I'm going to do is realize that whenever I have um, a power acting on a product, this exponent is going to drop and apply to both of them. Then I'm going to apply the power of a power which says that this, neg this negative 3 is going to multiply by the power of the current term. So what I have then is x to the negative 12 and y to the negative 21. Now I'm going to treat each one of these individually. They both have a negative. A negative tells each individual term to flip down to the bottom. So uh, in this case, I'm going to be left with 1 over x to the 12 y to the 21. Okay. Now, I, I also want you to realize, and I'm going to switch colors here so you can see that, okay, uh, that I can uh, that I can do that negative exponent first. So I could do them in a different order. So let's take deal with this negative first. And what that's going to do is that's going to take 1 over and it's going to take the entire product of x to the 4th, y to the 7th. And it brings it to the denominator and then we make the exponent positive. Now we can apply the power uh, the power of a power and our product rule and get 1 over x to the 12th y to the 21st. So you see we get the same answer here okay but we've dealt with the negative exponent first. In our next problem uh, we've got a quotient of a variety of, uh, of terms. What I want you to first notice is that there are x terms and there are y terms. So we can separate this out. Let's go ahead and just deal with these individually so that we realize that they don't interact. Okay, And it's a product now of x to the negative 1 over x over uh, times y over y to the negative 2. Okay. What this is going to give us here is if we deal with the x's alone, uh, this is x to the negative 1 minus 1. That is the quotient <clears throat> of powers. The bases are the same, so we take the first one, the negative 1, and subtract the second one from it. And when there's no number here, that's 1. We're going to multiply that by the same trend. On the right here, this is going to be 1 minus negative 2. What we're left here with is 1 minus 1 gives us x to the negative 2 times y. 1 minus negative 1 gives us 3. This negative 2 in the x is going to tell us to send that to the denominator, so our final answer will be y cubed over x squared. I also want you to see that um, we could deal with this uh, a little differently. Whenever we have this negative 1 over x here, I could take that term. I could take this term right here and just look at it by itself. And that, the negative 1 tells me to put that in the bottom. So I can see this as x times x. From this, you'll see that we get the x squared in the denominator. The same thing is true over here with the y we could take a look at this guy. What does the negative 2 in the denominator says? This says move that 2 to the top. So this is equivalently y times y squared. 
or y cubed. That's how we get the y cubed on the top. So we can do the, our, our rules specifically, or we can bring things up and then combine them. Let's take a look at our third and final problem for this section. This one deals with numbers, x's, and y's. So we're going to take our general rule and start by combining um, all terms tops and all terms bottoms. I'm going to resist the temptation to multiply 7 by 12 to get 84. I'm just going to leave it as 12 times 7. Remember, we want to break things down before we build them back up. I'm going to combine my x's. I get an x to the 6th and y cubed. I'm going to put this over a denominator that I combine. Again, I'm going to keep things separated here in terms of factors for the numbers, 7 times 4. Then I'm left with x to the 4th, y. So I'm going to deal with these all independently, but you can see right away that we can reduce some factors. This 7 is going to cancel out with the 7 on the bottom. And 12 divided by 4 is 3, so the 4 cancels out, the 12 becomes a 3. Okay, So let's take a look at, now that we've simplified numbers first, and we're left with 3x to the 6th, y cubed, all over x to the 4th, y. Now, to end this, we realize that x to the 6th over x to the 4th is x to the 6th minus 4, or x squared. You could see that 4 of the 6 on the top would cancel with the 4 on the bottom. The same thing is true here with our y's. y squared divided by y leaves us with just one y, because that is y to the 2 minus 1, or y to the 1. So that concludes our work with um, simplifying algebraic expressions that uh, also have variables in them.